Uh, and speaking of stories that are hitting the news, I know um, I don't even need to go over this slide. I mean, everybody reads the paper every day, and you know we we have this conversation um, many times about uh, technology that's being used and algorithms now uh, really being able to accelerate um, uh, using data for everything from getting a job to getting a loan and often that having a negative impacts on society. And um, what I say uh, is that nothing's changed uh, in the sense that this is always, this has been going on for a very long time in spreadsheets and just other technology. And Kathy O'Neill, I put the book in here for folks who might be interested. I read her book several years ago on weapons of mass, mass, mass destruction and she talks about, you know, what's been going on in the banking sector and other areas, you know, loan lending and, and other areas that um, has been going on for years in spreadsheets. But now is there's an opportunity for this to massively accelerate uh, with the advances of newer technology and machine learning and Python and whatnot. Um, on the flip side, uh, there's also a great opportunity to start to do more and more and use this use um, this emerging technology and algorithms for good. In conversations with the Center for Data and Innovation, um, they do a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, research on what kind of policies to recommend to governments. And their view is that if only the government could do more work partnering with Google and, and Facebook, uh, because their data is so rich, especially in mobility, you know, they probably probably could have tackled the issue of COVID much quicker, you know, knowing, doing contact tracing, if we had mobile data information uh, is much richer than New York City's ability to track people moving through subway systems today. So the more we can look for ways and uh, governments and, and, and the pri private and public can partner uh, to use this technology, we can also use this for good. Um, but today we want to talk about, you know, then how do we do that? Um, again, just hearkening back to the survey, um, uh, this is what you said, you know, about your employer supporting policies. 37% of you said that uh, this, in, that your, your employers are supportive, but only 90% are aware that your company's putting kind of formal practices forward. So, our hope is that after today's call, you know, you can go back and have some influence on that with some of the things that we share with you today, and that you might have maybe in some ways more of a sense of urgency to do so. Um, uh, and again, these numbers will change when they come out in the report. Um, and uh, the more folks uh, provide comments and questions and discussion, we can enrich and, and elaborate on that report, your feelings about what can be done in your corporations to improve these numbers. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, who is accountable. Um, I just mentioned the Center for Data Innovation. They're doing an awful lot of work on, uh, like I said, uh, policy studies and making recommend recommendations to the legislature today. <laughs> on uh, who should be responsible when things do go wrong uh, so that we can get more accountability. Uh, right now, there has been a self-policing, self-regulation focus. And the, a lot of the discussion is, is how do you begin to get more of a balance between self-regulation and maybe some tactical or industry-based um, rules and regulations that can incent people to be more, take more care and concern. Uh, one of the uh, laws that's uh, going forward or has been put in front, being put in front of the legislature is something called algorithmic accountability. And most of the folks on the call have probably heard over the last year, lots of discussions about uh, developers needing to be more responsible. And uh, this algorithmic accountability rule would make operators responsible. So if you're an operator and you're on the call, 
you know, I just asked the question and you can put your response in the chat, you know, by responsible, they mean that if you, if, if, if you did not take the right reasonable care and deployed a system into the environment and it caused harm, you there could be punishment from financial sanctions to jail time for doing so. And the feeling is, and this is why some of these laws are now start, these recommendations for laws are coming forward, is that they want to figure out who should who's the closest to the system in watching it learn and watching it change once it's deployed into the environment, um, who's the closest to that system uh, and who should be responsible. And you're seeing this now with the you know, uh, autonomous car that ran over the individual. It's not just the corporations that they're going after to sue, but they're also suing operators and individuals within a firm. So I think one of the things that we wanted to talk about today is um, is there a, a racy, a roles and responsibility and accountability uh, clarity within your organization and um, proper thresholds and six sign-offs and signatures for things that um, maybe shouldn't be an operator or a developer's responsibility. Um, so, you know, this, something like this uh, to empower uh, the technical workers to make sure there's clear boundaries. We hear, we've hear, heard stories, uh, obviously, in the news about Google's, um, Google's um, ethics officer who's been fired, and then the following one was let go as well. Um, you know, are there uh, the appropriate um, escalations and uh, sign-offs and um, uh, known ways to behave between people in terms of roles and responsibilities and what you're responsible for within an organization so that you don't have these kinds of mistakes. I think a lot of these things are entirely avoidable um, the more we have clarity around these things.